Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. As you continue on your journey, we want to remind you of two important tips. First is to make sure you print out the worksheet. Every single time you log into our YouTube channel, we're excited that you are joining this community. We believe this is a special community. We have heard from so many nurse educators who have nailed down their success and tied it directly to these YouTube episodes and following our seven week study plan. So congratulations. We're super excited to celebrate with you. So make sure you email us and let us know about your success. Remember that we are here to support you every single step of the way. And even though your journey is going to be unique based on your personal experiences, we have a no judgment zone policy and just know that we are indeed here to support you and to guide you and are available to consult with you. We have a 15 minute complimentary coaching session or you can choose to schedule one hour with us where we, we will talk about your specific pathway to success. All right, so reminder number two is to make sure that you have all of your resources to help you close your knowledge gaps. If you have not been to the NLN website, they are your primary source of information about eligibility as well as the content that you can expect to see on the CNE, CNE Novice, and CNE CL exams. That is going to be included in your candidate handbook. All right, so go to nln.org and that's where you'll see all of the great information. At the very top, there's a tab called NLN certification and that is where all of the information is located to help you figure out what your next steps are gonna be as you plan to sit and study with us here at Dr. Sellers Educate to close those knowledge gaps. And that's where you're gonna go to schedule your exam. Those are the major tips for this episode. We are continuing on our journey to discuss and hopefully close knowledge gaps or to validate for you that indeed you are very knowledgeable about educational learning theory. And we're gonna focus on cognitivism in this episode. All right, so first let's go ahead and take a look at a practice test question like we always do. That's really important. As you identify where your knowledge gaps are, you wanna make sure that you are following a due diligence process and making sure that you are clear about where your gaps are. And most importantly, how are you gonna close those knowledge gaps? So for our practice test question, it states, the learning experience is influenced by the teaching strategies chosen by the nurse educator. Which evidence-based teaching strategy is most aligned with cognitive learning theory? We have four choices here. If you wanna pause the video and then come back whenever you're ready to con continue the lesson as we now transition to the content that we'll cover in this episode. When we look at cognitive learning theory, one great resource for you is going to be Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing 6th Edition starting on page 248. This is where you're gonna see a summary of the cognitive learning theory along with the premise of the why and what specific concepts and tenets are aligned with this learning theory. The implications for nursing education are over on page 253 and on table 14.1, starting on page 249, you're gonna see the cognitive learning theory right at the top. It gives you a great description um, as well as those um, practical uses which we've highlighted here for you. What you wanna do when you walk away from our snapshot is spend at least 30 minutes reflecting on the content that we've talked about, okay? And part of that reflection is you thinking about where are you on that scale of competency? We talk about an 80% confidence level. That means that you feel like 80% of the content is easy for you to grasp. Therefore, you're able, you feel confident in your ability to sit on the exam and choose the correct answer. Remember that the questions on the CNE exams are strongly connected to the higher level learning of application. All right. And we draw from our experiences, our personal firsthand experiences as a nurse educator to help us answer those questions correctly or we pull from content that we have reviewed as part of our seven week study plan journey. All right, so let's talk about three of the learning tenets associated with cognitivism. First is that the learning happens through active discovery. So students are engaged in active learning experiences. They want to better understand the why 
behind the what in their clinical practices. It's an ongoing mental process where they are processing the information so that it makes sense to them. And it's very goal oriented. Okay, so this learning theory, there are specific learning objectives that students and us in our role as facilitators of learning, we are helping students reach those goals ultimately. The teaching strategies, we wanna remember that it's important for students to be able to explain back to us what we have just shared with them, what we have just talked about. A good exercise would be at the end of a, a, a lecture or the end of a learning experience is we are asking for students to share with us three key takeaways from the discussion we've had that day. Okay, that's a, a strategy that we call here, Dr. Sellers, educate, explain back. And then third, what are those evaluation methods that are associated with cognitive learning theory? These are the ones that are going to occur over a lengthy period of time, right? Because we want to give learning a chance to happen. We want our learners to have a chance to process the information, to understand the why, and to make practice decisions, to make decisions in the didactic setting when it comes to an exam, when it comes to semester long projects, it allows them to be able to connect the dots. Okay, so scaffolding, scaffolding is a great concept that is used often when we talk about cognitive learning theory because students are building on their past experiences over a period of time or their past learnings, especially when it comes to an exam. And I'll come on camera to make this a little bit more engaging. When it comes to exams, we know that exam review is a very important time for us to connect with our students so that yes, we're taking the time to do our exam analysis. And more importantly, we are hearing from the voice of the student. What I really like about exam reviews is that it allows for engagement in that qualitative discussion because we have the quantitative, right? That's what the exam analysis tells us. We have psychometric testing measures that tell us what the reliability and validity, what the um, different indicators are related to students' performance on each of the exam questions, whether the distractor effective, um, so all of those answers are in the quantitative results. Well, what about the qualitative? That's where we're able to sit down with our students from a cognitive learning theory standpoint, better understand what gaps they may have in their knowledge base and in their comprehension of content that we have shared with them. All right, so looking at those semester long projects, um, such as a group project is a great way to really evaluate if learning has happened over the period of time. All right, so let's go back and take a look at our practice test question. So the four choices related to the question of looking at a specific evidence-based teaching strategy aligned with cognitive learning theory, A is adding a self-evaluation of the learning activity, B is to integrate discussion board case studies, C, clinical post conferences that connect to didactic, or D, assigning individual practice time and skills and SIM lab. All right, so if you chose option C, clinical post conferences that connect to didactic, that is the best choice as a teaching strategy most closely aligned with cognitive learning theory, right? Because students, again, are going to be able to process their decision-making as it relates to connecting the dots from the what they learn in that didactic formal classroom experience and how they apply that learning that they developed in the didactic setting and put it into practice, right? That is scaffolding of learning and students having an opportunity to think about that and to share and discuss perhaps some missed opportunities or what they did really well also um, is going to be able to align with the cognitive learning theory um, the best. So if you questioned whether or not it may have been A, let's just talk about that, adding self-evaluation of learning activity. Well, students' ability to do a self-evaluation really isn't the strong connection or the strong relationship to cognitive learning theory, okay? And then we look at B, integrating discussion board case studies. That's a good activity. Um, discussion boards are great. However, we want to be able to engage with our students, right, and have discussions about what gaps they may have and help them close those knowledge gaps in real time. Okay, so that's the value of that clinical post-conference because it is going to be active 
engagement of the learning process and provide some clarity with our students as well about what they may have missed. And then assigning individual practice time, that's a great activity for students who want to focus on perhaps some individual activities. But as far as a teaching strategy for cognitive learning, students have to know what they don't know. And when it comes to that individual practice time, that may or may not, not happen. So the best choice is going to be C. All right, so hopefully this exercise and this review of content has helped you verify or validate that indeed you're doing pretty good as it relates to educational learning theory, specifically looking at cognitivism. And if you were surprised to see some of the content here, or if it's still a little fuzzy for you, that's why you're going to spend 30 minutes focusing on content from Billings and Halstead. That is our primary reference to help us close knowledge gaps, specifically looking at table 14.1 and the entire chapter 14. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to us. Info at drsellerseducate.com is how you can reach us. And we have lots of programs and services available to you on our website, drsellerseducate.com. There is also right here in the description, a discount code to join us for our monthly bootcamp. We're starting up 2023, the third Saturday in January, we will meet every single month. And we're gonna be talking about some great content to help you close those knowledge gaps with a more interactive activity. Okay, so we're excited to launch our new style of our monthly bootcamp. We really think it's gonna be time well spent for you on your journey. All right, so until next time, we hope you have a great one, everybody.